Welcome back to another Purpose in Pixie Dust podcast. My name is Lindsay Dollinger, and I am so excited for our guest today, Kristen Woodford. Kristen is the routine queen, and so we're going to be talking all things routines and habits and taking care of yourself, and no matter where you are at on your business, I know this episode is going to be freaking amazing. So Kristen, welcome to the show. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me, and I'm really excited to be here. Yay. Okay. So let's just dive in. Give us all the goods. How did you become the routine queen? Like, what have you done up to this point? Just tell us the whole story. Yeah. Um, I am wildly passionate about routines now because I believe that um, routines set us free. And I was not always like that. Um, I do like early mornings and really early mornings now. And that always wasn't, wasn't always the case either. And I actually used to do everything that I could to be free as a bird and rebel against routines and structure and all of that, because I thought it was like constricting. Mm -hmm. And I think I spent a large number of years of my early adult years feeling like there was something missing that I couldn't quite put my finger on in terms of yeah. life and how I was feeling and life was really good and I loved it. And, um, I was doing all the things that I wanted to and nothing was wrong, but something wasn't mm. right that I couldn't put yeah. my finger on. Yeah. And it, and I had tried a number of different things and, um, I had tried like traveling and looking for answers outwardly and elsewhere. Mm -hmm. Um, and I do have a background in corporate. Um, and I also have a young family. I have a four and a half year old daughter and a business. Oh. So I'm no stranger to trying to juggle all the things. And it wasn't yeah. until my daughter was one and we were getting ready. I was getting ready to go back to work after mat leave. And it was really a moment, a pivotal moment for me when I was downstairs on my yoga mat in the basement. And I couldn't, I couldn't feel like myself. I was missing a spark. Mm -hmm. I was like, something yeah. has to, something has to change. And I don't know what yeah. that is. And it was a very confusing feeling because yeah. like I said, nothing was wrong. Yeah. Um, and in that moment, I decided to invest in myself. And that started with physical activity because that was easy and something, I mean, not easy, but it was something right. that I knew. It was a low do. hanging fruit. Yeah. 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 And started with that. And then lo and behold, I started feeling better. And then I started wanting to do more things. And so I added to my morning routine a little bit by little bit and trial and error and um, motivation. And there was a lot of trial and error. And what <laughs> I realized, <laughs> and what I realized was that the whole time, my whole life, the secret sauce was within me. Um, and it came from very simple routines and rituals and a structure at the beginning of my day that really allowed me some time to reflect and invest and set intentions for me and how I wanted to feel in the day. And by prioritizing me first before anyone else was awake, mm. I filled my cup. And then I all of a sudden had all of this energy and patience, not all the time, but um, yeah. energy and patience. And it seemed to unlock this level of excitement and aliveness that I had been craving for so long. And all of a sudden it opened up a whole new world and I became a lover of routines and rituals. Oh my gosh. I love that. <laughs> no, no, it's, it's so good because I feel like there's so many people that can relate to that feeling and also probably the trial and error of figuring out what that looks like. Or, I mean, if you're like me, I definitely do not have a set morning routine all the mornings. Like I do when I'm not going to my day job, but when I go to my day job, because I have to get up at 515 for my day job anyway, <laughs> without a nice morning routine. And I'm I just like, I cannot wake up any earlier. Um, so I would love to know what sort of, tips or advice you would have selfishly for myself um, or, you know, just people listening who are like, I can't imagine getting up any earlier or like, is it a thing? Like, okay, yes, you are going to get up <laughs> like 15 minutes, you know, like what sort of advice do you have for that person? I think it depends on a few things. And the first is to take a 
a real look at where you're at in life and what season you're at. Mm -hmm. So for instance, if you are someone with a newborn at home, you're going to have a different routine as in, you know, you're just trying to survive for the first few months, right? Or if you have a new pet, new puppies. Mm -hmm. Um, And so grant yourself some grace and take a real look at where you're at and what you can actually do. So if you're already getting up at 5.15, maybe getting up at 4.15, isn't going to cut it. And so, but maybe getting up at five would work. And what can you do in that 15 minutes to serve yourself the best? Um, so that you start your day with something that is just for you. I think that so often, so many of us, um, I'm going to say victim of circumstance and that sounds so extreme, but we, we, let stuff happen to us. And it's not about what happens to us. It's about how we react to what happens to Mm. us. Right. Yeah. And so if, if we're able to take some time at the beginning of our day to set the tone, to set our intention, how do we want to feel that day? It doesn't mean that things aren't going to go awry or that, you know, we're not going to feel hard emotions sometimes, but it will provide us a stronger foundation and a base for how we want to feel. And then we're taking a proactive approach instead of just being like, well, I wonder what's going to happen today. It's like, you're taking the bull by the horns. You're taking control Mm -hmm. of your day. um, And that makes the world of difference. So taking a look at where you're at, um, honestly, like what you can, uh, what you can afford in terms of time. Mm -hmm. And another misconception I think is that, we think we need one hour or two hours, or we need to invest Mm -hmm. like this crazy amount. And while that may be nice. And one day I would love to see us all on a beach drinking coffee while we like ease into our day. Sometimes that's just not realistic. (laughs) And so, um, it doesn't have to be that the, the, one of the key success, um, features is consistency and small actions. So what can we do that is easy to implement and easy to sustain is the key. So if you say, I'm going to go to the gym two hours a day, five days a week, and right now you're not doing any, that's not sustainable. So don't set yourself up for failure. Maybe it's getting up 15 minutes earlier and writing five minutes in your journal and taking a couple of minutes of silence and stillness to feel into the feeling state of how you want to be that day. And that's what you do. And you can have it stacked. So start with that for a week or a month or whatever it is until that becomes as comfortable and as natural as other things like brushing your teeth, for instance, right? Mm. And then once that's part of you, then layer on something else. Don't try to do too much at once. And little bits. Consistency is a superpower in itself. And don't get discouraged if you get one week in. And don't feel like a completely different person. You have to keep doing Mm. the things. And then at some point, there's going to be a tipping point where you're like, man, I cannot imagine my life without all of this. But it's that investment at the beginning. Um, And sometimes sometimes it does mean waking up earlier and just (laughs) like really having the discipline. Making yourself do it. (laughs) To just do it. And Mm -hmm. then sometimes it's like, okay, like what really like, and it also depends on what type of person you are. If you're the type of person who's like super competitive and you can, um, you can push yourself and that's how you thrive, then that's how you approach Mm -hmm. it. If you work better with a gentler approach, then, um, work that in accordingly. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. A hundred percent. Is there a certain, um, because you mentioned journaling and I know you mentioned movement in yours and meditation. Is there a certain um, thing that you recommend people start with or does it just kind of depend? I recommend trying a bunch of things and then seeing what sticks because what works for me isn't going to work for you necessarily. Right. And what works for you today won't necessarily work for you in six months. And so, especially when you're starting out, um, you're not going to know what, what helps you feel your best. So yes, there's definitely recommendations, movement, stillness, um, for sure. So move your body in some way. 
some people like intense workouts and it's like a 45 minute, you know, strength training or cardio. Other people like gentle movement. And so it's five minutes of stretching or yoga or Pilates, something like that. Some sort of movement to get your body like flowing in the day. Uh, nutrition. So, <clears throat> excuse me, start with a glass of water before your coffee. Um, you know, leave, mm. I usually leave out a glass of water with lemon, fresh squeezed lemon. And that's what I drink right off the bat. It helps age, um, be, like start your digestion and it also helps keep you regular. So there's all these like fun benefits, <laughs> yeah. um, to it. And then stillness. Sometimes we get so itchy thinking about being still mm -hmm. and it's something that we can practice and something that we can get better at but it's so important maybe you start with two minutes of stillness and silence maybe you listen to a guided meditation there's insight timer um or you know that's the app that i use but there's a bunch of um, other ones available as well so maybe it's 10 minutes of guided affirmations maybe it's just listening mm -hmm. to some music that just calms you um, something okay. that puts your body in a relaxed state and relaxes your nervous system. The more you can do that, that's when you start getting messages from your body and maybe that's mm. um, about what it needs. And so, um, you're not going to hear and feel those cues if you don't allow yourself time to explore that. And then mm. journaling is a great one. So great. You can use it as a brain dump. So sometimes there is so much going on in our brains that we can't focus on anything else. So take a moment and just write out, free write, whatever is going on in your brain. Don't worry about specific prompts. Don't worry about how it sounds. No one else is going to read it. This is just for you. So if you're in a complaining mood, get it all out on paper. <laughs> you know, it's like it's yeah. you're clearing space um, mm. to allow other stuff to creativity and productivity and everything like that. Mm -hmm. And then gratitude. So take even just a moment to write three things that you're grateful for, or three amazing things that you, um, that happened the day before or that day, the more we can put ourselves in a state of gratitude, um, the higher we're going to raise our vibration and our frequency. Uh, what else? I do? You could do breath work, EFT tapping. You can do um, meditation. Reading is another one. So in the morning is when I do my personal development reading. So this is not a time, at least for me, for fiction. It's a time when I'm learning something. And then that's something that I can apply throughout the day. My goal is to read 10 pages a day. We're actually doing 75 um, strong right now. And a lot of people are choosing to do five or 10 pages a day. It doesn't seem like much. It takes like, you know, yeah. 15 minutes or less and yeah. it's going to add up. And so yeah. have, have a dream list, right? Like if you hear of something that you want to try, put it on your list and then try it out. Not everything is going to stick and you don't have to do everything um, all at once on, but you can have a list to choose from and then prioritize. What is the one thing that makes you feel your best? So for me right now, it's exercise. I know if I don't have time to do anything else, mm -hmm. I'm going to exercise and that's going to make me feel my best. So you can pick and choose and play with it. It's not, it's never, once you choose something, like set in stone. it's never set in yeah. stone. And it's great to do a constant review. So like every week or every month, mm. be like, what's working? What's not? How do I feel? How can I shift this? So question for you then, because we talked a little bit about sometimes you just have to have the discipline to like do it for a little while. <laughs> Is there a set time that you're like, give it at least a week or give it at least like or is it like the first morning you do it and you're like, this sucks. I hate this. <laughs> like, do you know what I mean? Is there a, a set amount of time that you recommend to give, you know, give yourself a little time to get adjusted before you go switching it? It's going to be different for everyone. And so what I can say is usually at the beginning, motivation is high, right? It's new. It's exciting. Mm -hmm. It's like you're on it. And maybe you get two days in, maybe you get two weeks in and you're like, hmm. I don't, you know, mm. your body is trained to do what it knows, to, to do what it knows. And so it's going to go back to what's familiar. And that 
the beginning, change may be hard and it may be uncomfortable and you have to find a way to push through. And the biggest way to work your discipline, to strengthen your discipline is to figure out your why. So why are you doing this? Why are you getting up earlier? Why are you doing this whole morning ritual? But go deep on your why. So I'll use an easy example. Lots of people say, I want to lose 10 pounds. Okay, well, why? Um, because when your alarm goes off at five o'clock in the morning, you're going to be like, I don't mm-hmm. actually care about 10 pounds. I'm just, I just want to sleep. <laughs> I'm okay with these 10 pounds. <laughs> yeah. Right. And so you can, you become a master negotiator with yourself in like a half mm. sleep mode. But if you figure out your why that is strong enough for you. So like my why is I want to feel alive. I want to feel alive every day, not every moment of every day, but, um, And I know that these things help me do that. They help me find the magic in the small moments. They give me energy to do all of the things that I need to do and to still feel mostly energetic at the end of the night instead of falling asleep for like falling into bed exhausted and depleted. So figure out your why. Put it on a post-it note. Put it on like your bathroom mirror. Put it on the screensaver of your phone. Put it somewhere where you're going to see it several times a day. Join an account, join an accountability group or um, have a coach or someone that can kick you in the butt when you need it because it's like you and time. I don't know. It could take a week. It could take a month. But realistically speaking, you probably want to give it at least three months. Because that gives oh, you enough. Three months. Oh gosh, I was not <laughs> expecting that. Okay, okay. <laughs> but we're we're making we're making like a, a lifelong change here, right? Yeah, that's that's, that's the goal. Okay, all right, that's fair. That's fair. <laughs> so if you do it for a couple of weeks, it'll become part of your routine for sure. But then you go on vacation, or um, you know, you have some visitors come into town, and all of a sudden you take a week off, and you're like, I don't know, it's kind of hard to get back mm. into it again to really solidify it as like the way I look at it is like habits turn into routines, turn into rituals and a ritual is like Mm -hmm. part of you. And then once it gets to, yeah, it takes a while for sure because it Mm -hmm. took you your whole life to build the routines that you currently have. Right. Right. Or lack, whatever. And if you can give it that time, not saying it's going to take that long, but if you can give it that time where it becomes a ritual, it becomes part of you, you're going to have it for the rest of your life. And then if you do take a month off or whatever, you're not having to find the motivation again to do it because it's yeah. just part of you. It's like, okay, this is, this is just what I do. Yeah. Okay. You um, brought up something that was going to be my next question for people who are like, okay, well, I'm going out of town, I'm going on vacation. Um, or I'll just give another example for myself. I, I, apparently I'm getting like coached myself on this call. <laughs> um, I take students, for example, to Europe for two weeks. So I don't do a traditional workout that entire time because I'm walking like 20,000 steps and I am literally exhausted the entire trip. So the thought of <laughs> working out in the evening or you know in the morning when we get up is like, just using that as an example. So what would you say to someone who's like, okay, there are pieces of my routine that I know I'm not going to be able to do for an X period of time. Um, Do you have any tips on like, that's okay. You know, jump back in when you get home or, you know, what would you say to like your clients that, that are working with you? Mm -hmm. Figure out what your goal is. So if you are going to sit on a beach somewhere because relaxation is your goal, forget the workouts. Like you're, you're going for relaxation and anything else is going to stress you out and become something Mm -hmm. that you dread. So take that time to just truly be present in the moment. If you're going on a trip with your students and walking a bazillion steps a day, that's a workout. (laughs) Forget the workout that, you know, (laughs) yeah, you will get back to it when you come back. Um, and so, but, but plan ahead. So know what it's going to be like, know what the intention is, and then know your, how you're going to approach that. So mm-hmm. if you are, you know, on some sort of, if you have like a set routine, is there some that works well for you? Is there something in it that you can keep without being so rigid? Mm-hmm. So, you know, maybe, maybe you pick up, 
uh, like reading or journaling or something that serves you in maybe a bit of a different way or something that is part of your routine, but you condense it, um, you can shift it. It's mm. not set in stone. Yeah. The, the whole point is to empower yourself to make the choices and to, then to make it work for you. And like I said, it's going to be different depending on what you're doing. So yeah, just yeah. taking a real look at it ahead of time and then figuring out your intention and how you're going to do it. Yeah. I love how you said, don't make it so rigid. Cause I think that's the biggest thing that I hear a lot from people is it's like almost like this all or nothing mentality. And it doesn't have to be that way with your routine no. or any habits that you have. Um, oh, go on. No, you're right. And it doesn't. The one thing I will say is that when you are first starting out and starting to build it, it's a little bit like, it's a little bit like sleep training a baby where you need to enforce or starting a business, right? You likely will need a little bit more structure and rigidity at the beginning to get that built. And so like you put in the work now to reap the benefits later mm. type of thing. Yeah. And so I'm not saying it's going to be terrible, but just something yeah. to be I mean, aware of. Yeah. yeah. And then, and then you can build in some flexibility for sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's like, I'm picturing that um, meme of like the person pushing the boulder up the mountain and how it's like so much easier once your momentum gets going, than if you like stop or you like let it roll back, like just inch it forward just a little bit, even if it's just like a little baby inch at a time. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Um, okay, so we talked morning routine. Are there is there anything extra or different you um, do with your own personal evening routine or that maybe we could use for ideas to build our evening routine or anything around the evening routine? Yeah, definitely. The morning routine starts the evening before, without a doubt. Yeah. And so okay. um so you need to find out what works for you, but what I will say is the more you can prep the night before, you want to make it easier for your future self. You yeah. want to set everything up so that when you wake up the next morning, literally the only thing you have to do is get out of bed and go to <laughs> the space where thing. you need. Yes. And yeah. everything is set up, right? Because if your alarm goes off and you're like, okay, where are my workout shoes? And I'm not sure where my earbuds are. And, and, and. <laughs> There's too many decisions. You're going to go back to bed. You're not going to want to do the things or you're going to have decision fatigue so that by the time the, you know, mm -hmm. later morning comes and it's time for yeah. you to make bigger business decisions or life yeah, um, decisions, you're going to be worn out. So yes, the evening before set out everything that you need for the next morning and then figure out your sweet spot for going to sleep. So maybe that's going to sleep mm. earlier. If you're a night owl, maybe it's adjusting that, right? Focusing on how you go to sleep, like what time do you fall asleep easy? Do you stay asleep? Is, do you need a brain dump um, before you go to bed of just like literally like writing out your whole to-do list for the next day so that you're not dreaming about mm. it? Do you need to do a visualization of taking everything that's in your mind and putting it on the coat hook out on mm. your street? It'll be there for you to pick up tomorrow if and when you need it. Do you need a yeah. sleep pep talk? Because the last thing, your last thought at night becomes your first thought in the morning. And so mm -hmm. why not try telling yourself that you're going to have an amazing sleep with the right amount of rest. You're going to wake up feeling well rested. Yeah. Um, all of these little things will contribute to the to the bigger thing. So it's not just... Yeah, yeah, it's not just five minutes in the morning. It's something to be conscious of throughout the day. Nothing that takes a huge amount of time, but it does take some thought and intention for sure. Yeah. Oh, I love that. Um, when you said that about that visualization, it reminded me, and it's so funny because I never think about this until I'm going to bed. So it's just like this like thought popped in my mind. I have the Peloton app because I love my Peloton and I do a lot of sleep meditations on that before I go to bed. And my favorite one is this one where... I'm trying to remember it because I'm always half asleep when I do it, but um, there's like boxes and they have you put like the things you're worried about in one box, things that happened today that were not so great in a box, things that happened today that were great and were in a box. And then you like file all the boxes away because like none of it matters. Mm -hmm. 
but sleep. And I'm always like, yes. And like, I can like feel myself like physically, you know, it's so helpful. Those visualizations. Yeah. So highly recommend that. <laughs> I love it. And like, and I, I'm not sure if your crew is into the woo or not, but like some of this stuff might sound mm -hmm. far-fetched like, Oh, okay, whatever, but try it. What have you got yeah. to lose? And it, always amazes me so much um how impactful this stuff is just by those small little things and we have way yeah. more control over a lot more than we realize mm -hmm. and the thing with manifestation uh if you're listening to this and you're like mm, i tried that and it doesn't work for me there are still times to this day where like i will sit and really try i guess not manifestation um meditation wrong word but there are times when I sit there and I'm like, I'm going to meditate. I'm going to do that. And like, I do not drop into my body the way that I want to. Like there are sometimes it's just bad. <laughs> um, but yep. with practice, like I will say the majority of the time I am now able to like drop in a lot quicker, be a lot more aware of things, like be more open to things. So definitely. And that's one of those things, like you said, like you have to keep trying and keep doing it to add that and to really reap the benefits of that. So do not give up on that. If that is something that you are considering trying and you're like, eh. <laughs> I don't really know about that. Yeah. And the other thing too, that I'll do sometimes is like, I call it a conscious transition moment. Um, but it's throughout the day. So it works really well when you're, when you're shifting from one role to the other. So let's say you're coming home from work mm -hmm. and you're going into like after work mode or from, you know, if you're working two jobs from one to the other or from job to mom mode or whatever it is, <clears throat> or from mom mm -hmm. mode to partner mode, you can take just a moment and it, it really can be as simple as 30 seconds or five minutes, whatever you have. And it can be in your car. It can be at home. It, you know, it doesn't have to be a quiet place, but you go into like a little mini meditation almost. And it's just a moment to, take a couple deep breaths and just recognize everything that has happened up to that day and then let mm. it go. Mm. And then take a moment, a breath or two where you are just in that moment of breath and nothing else exists. And then oh. with another breath or two, like visualize yourself going into the next role or into the next part of your day. And just taking that little bit of time mentally shifts you. And so you're not yeah. constantly thinking about what happened or what hasn't happened yet. And it's just a way to be present in the moment. Um, yeah. and you can do them as often as you want throughout the day, but it's a good little reset. Yeah. That being present is so powerful because I think the majority of us, we're just so go, go, go all the time. And it's like, what's the next thing? And even be right before we started recording this, I did an Instagram story and I'm like, this is what I'm doing tonight. I'm doing this interview and then I'm going to go do errands. And then, I and I'm like always thinking the next step ahead. And I find it so powerful when you said, when you just said, I take a second just to get present. And like, what does that even really feel like? You know, when, when mm -hmm. we really, truly, it's almost kind of scary. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I shouldn't be scared of myself. Right. But like, like, because I, it is so unfamiliar to me. It's, I don't want to say it's uncomfortable, but it kind of, until you get really into it, you know? Um, and then I start thinking about it. I'm like, that's really sad because I, I feel like I'm present, but I'm not. And I'm like, okay, this is, so I love that you shared that because that's something that I know I personally am trying to be more aware of. So I would love to encourage other people to realize like, Hey, am I, am I actually being present? Am I taking time? Um, and like you said, that's a great transition because, um, at least for me with my day job, I have a nice car ride. So that's kind of my transition moment where I get to decompress a little bit. Um, but I know like when I have something after school, there there were times back in the day where I would do like a podcast interview at school before I left. And it was really hard for me to like take the hats on and off when I was still in the environment of the other thing. And so that exercise would have been really, really helpful. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. <clears throat> so thanks for sharing. Yeah, no, thank you. I appreciate that. Um, all right, Kristen. So tell, well, no, before they tell you, because I did this in the wrong order earlier, <laughs> I'm getting all like out of whack, this like post full moon <laughs> energy. Um, what I have three questions I usually ask my podcast guests at the end before we tell everyone how to connect with you. So first one, I feel like we basically already 
answered and that was about your routine. So I, I'll, I'll tweak it a little bit for you. Which is your favorite, your morning routine or your nighttime routine? Oh. I know, I knew that was gonna be tricky for you. Mm. Um, you can only pick one. <laughs> I have to say morning because. Okay. Uh, it's just like setting you up for success for the day. Yeah, it really sets the tone and and it's immediate. I will say that like, mm -hmm. so there's moments. So I don't do my routine all the time. I spent a couple months at the end of the year just lackadaisical and mm -hmm. I noticed a difference. And all mm -hmm. of a sudden you start getting, you know, easily frustrated and and things like that and you're like yep. oh like what is different and you're like oh right i'm not doing the mm. things <laughs> and within a few days of doing the things it's like bouncing down the stairs full of energy and just like mm. blast of cold water at the end of your shower and you're like bring it on and it's like yeah. a, it's instantaneous so my morning okay yeah okay all right i love that great answer um, what is your favorite personal development book or which one are you reading now? Cause a lot of people are like, I don't have a favorite. Either mm -hmm. I have to say my favorite, I have a lot of favorites, but one that tops the list is Atomic Habits by James Clear. Mm -hmm. And so That's if Christ. you, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> when I finally read it, I was like, I feel like this is, yeah, I am surprised it took me so long to read it. Um, but if you are looking to build your own habits or make changes, or it, it's a must read, like you, you have to mm -hmm. read it. Um, it talks about forming these habits in a sustainable way and how it's like, go for the small consistent change. And that's what's going to give you the, the crazy big sustainable change. And it's like mm -hmm. it's written in a really clear way. And if you're new to like all of this, The Slight Edge by mm -hmm. Jeff Olson, um, mm -hmm. it talks about similar principles, but it was one that sort of kickstarted this side of things. Have you read um, The Compound Effect? Yes. I feel like it's the same idea. Okay, yes. yeah, yeah. Yep. And then also another one that's similar is The Miracle Morning by Hal Elrod. Mm -hmm. So um, it's not my favorite, but it's a short read and it talks about you know, how to set up a morning routine if you're brand new to it as well. Oh, I love that. Okay. And then um, last question, your favorite vacation destination and or one on your bucket list. Okay. One on my bucket list is like Bora Bora or Fiji or something like that with mm. that, with a hut over the water where you yeah, look out yes. and you can't see anything else or any other huts, mm. but you have the yeah, the glass floor and a hammock, I will be there. And I'm just, oh, it feels so good. And then favorite destination, there's been a lot of them. I really liked New Zealand for the adventure stuff mm. um, and okay. Costa Rica for their way of living. Okay. What, okay. What kind of adventure stuff did you do in New Zealand? Huh. Lots of hiking, um, up glaciers and volcanoes, things like that. I did skydiving mm. on my birthday for the, which was the first and only time I've done it. No. Um, <laughs> first day yeah. only. <laughs> good answer. Yes. Oh, it, it was good. Me. I just haven't done it since. Um, okay. did some white water, white water rafting down like some mini waterfalls and things like that. Um, and then probably the biggest one of my life was the bungee jump. Oh, Wait, the canyon. Oh the, my gosh. Somewhere. Yeah. So it's the Nevis and it's, it's, well, what was it? 134 meters free fall. So you take this like little cable car to this <laughs> pod in the middle of the canyon and like, it's not off of a bridge or whatever. It's, it's hardcore. And then you walk the plank and I happen to look down cause I didn't want to walk off the plank and I froze and it was the scariest thing. And the half, the I... first half. Sorry, this is a longer answer than you wanted, probably. No, 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 but, no, no and it's the, fine. And the first half of the fall, I like saw my life flash before my eyes, and it was everything. Like I just, I was going to die. And then it was like something switched, and it was like the matrix where everything just like stopped. And the second half of it was so peaceful and so slow motion. It just was like this is like the most euphoric 
lovely feeling ever. And I loved it. Okay. So that was scarier than skydiving. Oh, like Benji? a million times. Yes. Yeah. Wait, why? Because it's the skydiving so much higher, right? And you're not attached. It is. See, to me, yeah. I don't want to be attached. <laughs> but it's so high that it doesn't feel high. Do you know what I mean? Um, <laughs> I, I can't say. You're like, you're <laughs> I mean, I am scared of going up a ladder, so both of them seem completely like I'm never doing them. <laughs> and, the other, the, and I think the bigger one for me was the skydive. I was attached to someone. I didn't have to do anything. I just sat yeah, there and they yeah. did all of it. Uh, right. The bungee, I had to step off of that. You're by so. yourself. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. Like, I literally, like, this is giving me so much anxiety, even, like, I shouldn't have asked. <laughs> just, oh, like, I highly oh, recommend this. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I hope my sister doesn't listen to this because she's the one who went skydiving on my mom's birthday. And so I'm, I'm like texting her and I'm like, if you die on mom's birthday, I'm going to be so mad at you. Like she's the one who does the adventure stuff. And I'm like the one who's like, don't do it. <laughs> but I, I envy all of you who have no fear and do all of the things because I'm sure that was really awesome. Well, that was a long time ago. So we'll, I don't know if I'd be able to do it now, but we'll see. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh. So cool. Okay. Kristen, tell us all the places that everyone can find you, connect with you, work with you. If they're like, dude, this was speaking to me. I need some routine. I need some Kristen in my life. Yeah. So you can find me on Instagram. It's um, Kristen Woodford. And then you can also find me. I have a podcast. It's the Routine Queen podcast. And those are the two best places to reach me. I have the Routine Queen membership. And so mm -hmm. it's a place where we hang out together. We help you develop your own daily ritual. And then it's that accountability and community that, um, for a year, um, that will help you evolve into the happiest, healthiest version of you. And then depending on when you're listening to this, um, but we do have occasional workshops with like how to set up your routines and then something that we have running which I think is going to be a regular thing is 75 strong. So it's 75 days of an accountability group. So check Instagram. We'll have like the latest details for those going on, but um, IG cool. in the podcast for sure. Okay. Awesome. And I will be sure to link that in the show notes so that you can connect with us. All right, Kristen, thank you so, so much. We appreciate you and look forward to talking to you some more. Thank you, Lindsay. It was really fun.